Hello, welcome back to another one of my movie rants. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but as it is fitting, I am wearing a Halloween top because me and my friend Sejon uh, have just come back from watching Halloween Ends. <laughs> So, overall, what did we think? I mean, just initial opinions at, at the get-go. Well, I've not seen any of the Halloween films, and I thought it was all right. I mean, for a horror film, it was serviceable. I guess it was a good horror film. But uh, I did remember looking on Twitter before uh, we watched it that a lot of people being negative and joking that Michael Myers was going to be a cameo. Uh, Jack here was optimistic and thought, oh, okay, yeah, it won't be a cameo, it'll be good. But unfortunately, um, I was proven correct. May I say, you didn't mention the cameo when we were talking about this before we saw the film. So all I knew was that there were bad reviews about it and I was just like... And I don't really go on Twitter much except to promote my own stuff. Um, but... Yeah, so I didn't really want to go knowing that other people thought, oh, it's bad or whatever. I'm rather a person who likes to judge it for myself. Um, so, yeah, I went to see the film. And, I mean, as a film, I still think it's it's great as its own, as its own thing. But, yes, there is a consistent, I would say, background discussion that is that... Halloween Ends wasn't really the Halloween Ends it was led to believe it should have been um, mainly because uh, as me and my friend uh, have discussed like straight after the film we thought that the film Halloween Ends should have been about the confrontation of Laurie and Michael Myers himself instead what we got was this weird almost false positive build up kind of like oh laurie is uh she's going up, getting over what happened with her and michael myers all these years and it's like getting to a better place <laughs> and then it just becomes this downward slope of creating something new um which, uh, I don't know, I think it was a bad move, to be honest. I mean, if they'd done it in a film that wasn't the final film, say, yeah. like, a couple of films ago, even, like, during the trilogy, it would have been fine, but this should have really been, like, a better focus, as we said, on uh, Laurie and uh, Michael Myers, because it's been about them from the beginning, and that's where it should be the focus. And... Um, I will say uh, another bugbear of mine was definitely the jump scares. I mean, yeah, they were okay, but it was just like, oh, we got you, we got you, here's the jump scare, and it's not really a jump scare. And I wouldn't just say it was Halloween's Ends, it's definitely a lot of um, Halloween films, uh, scary films in general yeah. films nowadays. I mean, if you go and look at like trailers right now, it's just like, boo, here's the film, it's scary, and... It does get quite annoying. And I have noticed, like, in trailers when we've watching cinemas, it's mm. always about the jump scares and it's never about the story. But I mean, jump scares are good, but in an, in the negative light, the jump scares over the years throughout whatever horror movie, but specifically this one, they're used for jump scares' sake and it's not a good thing because, uh, like, don't get me wrong, like, they worked. They did, like, scare scare me. Like, I just... I do... Bla I blasphemed in the cinema about five times every time it happens. I'm just like, Jesus! I'm an atheist, by the way, so no... No, um thing about religion or whatever you believe what you want to believe it could have been used to a better in a better way the jump scare format because it, it has been done to death like don't get me wrong over the years it's been done to death but it's scaring people for no reason because like the way that the horror uh genre has used jump scares over the years um well now i say over the years in modern history is that uh, it's used more as a distraction technique and then the the evil person or, or killer or monster gets them. We need to change that. We need to change that in the future moving forward because it needs to be used more 
I'd say efficiently and in a way that helps build in the intensity of the 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 horror film itself. But I think we went on a bit of a tangent on jump scares there. Uh, this is mainly about Halloween ends. In our defence, there's not really much to talk about. Not yeah. really much happened. And I will say now another point that I yeah. think that should be brought up is the slideshows. It was like showing parts of the original parts of the trilogy um, earlier on. Like yeah, well, it, yeah, it showed moments that I'd say not just in the trilogy. It was good to, like, kind of catch you up. So, yeah. for instance, it, like, say, John, he's a first-timer uh, watching the film, even though it's the last film, <laughs> to be his first film. Um, yeah, it does catch you up to speed as to what has happened and why the characters are in the situation they're in. Um but, but yeah, it, it was a weird setup, in, in my opinion, as I'm sure you agree. Um, that was nice to see the references. Uh, like the previous two of the modern trilogy, it, w- it was let out so that the first film was okay. Um, it's been like 40 years since. Uh, Michael Myers' last attack with Laurie or last confrontation with Laurie and now he's back out, escaped and he's on a killing spree again and then the second film comes out and it's a continuation of that and like the way I saw it rolling that the third film I thought was going to be a continuation of that and the way they had it set up for the third film which is as we discussed which what Halloween End should have been was the confrontation mainly between Laurie and Michael Myers uh, but in- instead it, it was uh, as as I would as I said in the cinema, like it it could have been more of a something else to hype up what should have been Halloween ends, like because they went on this whole story arc of uh, basically making a new Michael Myers. Um, like, I'm not gonna get into huge detail, but like basically. Like, you see that there's a bit of trouble with a babysitter, and they kind of reference this throughout the whole film, (laughs) is that the babysitter gets it, which in all the previous Halloween films, the babysitter does get it. But this time, they kind of slapped you in the face and said, you know what, instead of the babysitter being the victim, the babysitter becomes the monster, which is kind of inspired by uh, that that one film on Netflix, the babysitter killer or whatever. so I guess they kind of played with that and made made you see it from a different perspective, which, as we agree, it was good creatively, um, but they kind of tugged at the rope a bit too long, because I think oh, Halloween ends is it was it was a good setup I think as like. Um, when when the Laurie was explaining that Michael Myers, like with all those killings, kind of condemned the town to do evil, and there's like a symbolism of evil, uh, and so I think I think that um, the beginning should have stayed as the beginning, uh, whereby the babysitter does wrong. And because we saw the parents of the child screaming at the end, and I thought that that was a good intro to the Halloween film because it's about death and someone getting killed. So I thought, oh, fair enough. And it was interesting to not see Michael Myers at straight away at the beginning um, because I thought he would have been later on in the film anyway. Um, But yeah, it was it was interesting to see that as an intro and it should have stayed like that in my opinion Uh, because with the character uh, that was introduced I think like even though it was an interesting story uh, I think it should have been left at the beginning Mm. and then the rest of the film was mainly about the confrontation between Laurie and Michael Myers that being said also I feel like the finale was rushed because when we mentioned the slideshows just remember at the at the end they did show like a slideshow of like oh yeah it was like a collage of everything collage and yeah I mean it can work but it kind of just like cemented that yeah this finale is clearly rushed because they were Mm. just like oh yeah what about Michael Myers and uh, Laurie and they just like hastily put together so I will say um, it does in a way have a satisfying payoff but 
at the same time, not really. I mean, it it does. Like uh, everyone's everyone's like expectations for what happens to Michael Myers. Inevitably, it does happen. Like it's Halloween ends, so you suspect it would. Um, but yeah, I think it was just rushed too quick and it was over too soon that part uh in all honesty um i think that could have been a really good focus for the entirety of the film um if i'm being honest that being said um this has been like my first sort of proper horror film in a while and it's also small town horror kind of like you know stranger things and that sort of thing yeah. and i will say um having seen it um, I think it's definitely strengthened my love for small town horror and I'd love to see like more UK based ones and I'd love to write stories about them so it's definitely in some sort of way has inspired me slightly so it's not all like doom and gloom really but yeah in the end it just could have been better yeah it could have it could have been overall it could have been better yes and actually going back to what you said about how you thought it was the, the filming of it completing it was rushed I do think so, I mean, because if we think about... I mean, you didn't see it, but the last film, I believe it was ready and available for Halloween the day. Like, the 31st of October was when it was most, like, hyped. And, to be honest, I think we had a couple of days because this has been released, what, like, a few weeks before... Halloween, like, Halloween's big triumph. I mean, obviously, they had to do it because there are so many other, like, anniversary films, like, as well, that are getting their kind of big um, showcase. So, like, The Thing or Potterghost. Um, Ironically, The Thing was also featured um, in that film as well, and we actually yeah. see that on the 31st. So. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's it's clear to say that uh, they are showing the homage to all the greats in horror. Um, so, like, just seeing that little thing, like, it, we even found, like, the, the coincidental irony because we were discussing about it, like, a couple of days prior and even today, and then all of a sudden it, it's on the screen because we've had a bit of a day of predicting stuff and it's just happened. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was funny. Like, we had a bit of a laugh before the film's uh, atmosphere uh, actually settled in. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I think the sad thing also is is that I've noticed on Twitter that there are some like Twitter posts and Facebook posts from like Nerdist, Nerdrotic and stuff like that talking uh Nerdist, not Nerdrotic, but yeah, uh they've been mainly talking about like Halloween ends and the cow um the Michael Myers and how it was treated in the film sort of, but then I've noticed also there was a lot of posts about Smile and then sooner or later there was more posts about Smile than Halloween Ends mm. and it's in fact apparently like number one in certain box office so it is really a shame that Halloween Ends has not only been overshadowed by this movie but also that it kind of just went out with a whimper rather than a bang because yeah. so many films have been made and um, they then restarted with this trilogy and you'd think that it would end with a great end, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm actually surprised by how how many, in fact, like, horror-esque films are, are being released this year uh, because, like, uh, well, all they've had some aspect of horror, like, it could be crime, because, like, was it, like, it, it, we've got to see how they run, which I think, like, tugs a little bit at a kind of hot fuzz in a little bit of an aspect um, because it's like crime and someone sets up a murder and then murder takes place and people still get murdered. Uh, and then we've got Smile, like we saw the trailer for uh, Pray for the Devil and uh, what else? Uh, did was it Dear Darling or was it Sorry Darling? Yeah, something like that. And also the new uh, M. Shyamalan film, uh, yeah, that, no, yeah, that was an interesting I will one. say, on a humorous note, I did love how all the movie trailers were all horror film related. And there was this one trailer, which was for the cabin one. And it was like uh, two dads and a girl. And there was this happy music. And I thought, oh, OK, yeah, this isn't a horror film trailer. And then immediately wow. it's just like a yeah. horror film. And it's like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, but. Drax comes in and he's like... 
he, he, he's very sensitive and he's just like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, but, but I've got to kill you. Uh, coming back to Halloween Ends itself, yes. I will say one positive thing that I did quite like was the residents' uh, reaction to kind of Michael Myers because in this like film, they kind of set him up as a myth yeah. Urban legend, and I will say that is kind of the right approach for such an iconic character as like Michael Myers. I mean, with any other horror villain like uh, Freddy Krueger and all that, I think that would definitely work for any of them as well. And I kind of like how it's this myth and mystery, and you can tell the residents just don't believe, don't believe Laurie anymore. Hard. Well, no, they believed him, but. Uh, well, believed her that, but yeah. they, it, it was flipped as more of a blame sake mm. um, because like, even though it looked like things had gotten better in natural fact it really hadn't no. uh, because like the evil stayed like he disappeared he wasn't killed in the last film uh, which is why he's in this film um but yeah, he 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 left behind, as you say, like a substance of negativity that infested in the town, and then that's it. It slowly turned people against each other, uh, which only gets resolved at the end of the film, um, which, as we said, was like it seemed quite rushed and yeah. yeah. And um, I think on a final note, I would say uh, it's definitely been ups and downs for franchises like Halloween and stuff like that because some yeah. are being rebooted, some are being brought back, some are ending and it can be a mixed bag I'll say for franchises that have been running as long as like Halloween because you're definitely going to have some bad films, you're definitely going to have some good films yeah. but um, I think Halloween ends is definitely a sign that we are kind of in some places reaching franchise fatigue um, in some places, I would say. I would like to yeah. see more original films. I can definitely tell right from the cinema that there are going to be more original films, but I would unfortunately say stuff like Halloween Ends is the sign that maybe there's franchise fatigue and we need some fresh blood also in horror mainly. Yeah. Well. I mean, I wouldn't say like franchise fatigue, but I'd say franchise classicality, mm. to put as like a new interesting word uh, into my mouth. Um but what I mean by that is it has a formula. Let's say like the franchise has a certain formula that it thrives on. And because, and, uh, and this is why it was received so negatively, in my opinion, um, because they kind of, I don't know, they tried to do something new with the film... Um, because it, it, like I've seen the other the Halloween um, films like when it comes to the drama I'd say like the family drama or the setup or the build up towards what's going to be the violent gore and blood um, it was treated differently to like how it's normally done and so I think the reason why it became such a um, I would say fatigued disaster in a way. Well, disaster's a bit harsh. I'd just say um, a fatigued mistake um, was because they, they they tried something new and people aren't used to it. Yeah. Like, they're used to... Oh, okay, so there's a little setup of um, so like the character, main character being Laurie, and this is how it would have gone in my head. Uh, the character being Laurie, uh, she has just gotten over the fact that she that her daughter's killed, which was in the last room, along with many people uh, in the town. Um, so everyone's in mourning, but they're still cautious because uh, Michael Myers is still out there. He just vanished. He hasn't been killed. Um, so it should have it should have been consistent. Mm. It should have been like okay, so we're still at this point of um, where is he? Mm. Uh, instead of it, it just kind of like almost came on as a clean slate. It's like forty years, fair enough. Um, but uh, he disappeared. He didn't just vanish. No. And it was this weird. I would say it vibe to it as well. Mm. Because it was almost like he was, he had, it, like, in order for him to get back, um, the kind of killing spree he was on, he almost had to be discovered. Because I think if, 
the the main well the sec I said secondary character that we didn't really like in the film mm. if he hadn't have discovered Michael Myers was still alive I don't think mm. it would have continued because mm. they made it to a point where if that hadn't happened like they had to make it so that the events in the film had to have happened in order for the film to come to its final conclusion um, but if they hadn't have done that, then they could have just left the franchise and let bygones be bygones yeah. um, because they didn't really pick it up from where they should have done mm. uh, in the first place. As a final note for me, I would say that if we look at all the years of the Halloween's franchise, um, as they started out, a pretty small production house themselves, Bloomhouse, um, and uh, James Cameron. No, not James Cameron. James Car- uh, John Carpenter. Uh, well, no, he made the music. Um, the 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 director producer. He now does Avatar, and he's done Terminator. Oh yeah, James Cameron. Uh, James. Yeah, but is that his name? I think so. I hope that's his name anyway, <laughs> otherwise I'm a bad film student. Uh, but yeah, J- James James Cameron, uh, he started out the, the franchise, very little budget, uh, very few cast really, and kind of created this world, and then it's kind of lifted off. In terms of what Michael Myers is, he's definitely become an iconic character. And yeah. I think that's honestly, now thinking about it, that's probably another problem with this mm. film as well. Because Michael Myers has been such an iconic character that when he's not really much of a present in this film, people are just going to go, where's Michael Myers? Where is he? Yeah. Because that's what people really come to see. I mean, it's like with the James Bond franchise, people yeah. come to see... 007 if 007 is not there then what's the point so Mm. I think also I think the problem the Halloween franchise is definitely like the characters become so iconic that it can become a problem like you said they try to go another direction yeah but that direction is without Michael Myers himself Mm. and because people are so used to seeing Michael Myers I mean people in Halloween dress up with the boiler suit the mask yeah it's become really iconic and you don't even. I don't even now. Even think about it. We don't even get a proper look at the mask. We do see it, but yeah. it's like very the, the, dark. Look, I'm happy they kept to that whole thing. So like the mask itself, it's obviously like a little bit destroyed um, because in the previous film he ended up in a fire, but he got out of that, escaped it fine. Um, so evidence of the previous events was still there, uh, which was good. The mystery. The mystery stays, so they, that's the one thing that I'm happy that they stuck with. Because Michael Myers, he's only a name. Mm. <laughs> he's a name and a mask. We know the certain character parts of him is that, OK, he's a killer. Um, well, a serial killer, in fact. Uh, he happens to be Laurie's brother. Um, so, I mean, that's a big thing. But you never see the guy's face. Yeah. You never see the guy's face. Yeah, and also he didn't. He never talks. That's also yeah, a good he's one. He's silent. He's a silent killer, but that's what makes him so good. Anyway, yeah. So we have spoken a lot about Halloween ends. I think this has to be probably the longest. Well, a because it's my, my favorite horror franchise and it's the final film, so I think it deserves a bit of a longer episode. Um, but yeah, also another person in the in the video as well um do you want to shout out anything any socials or something you want them to follow or well i don't really have any socials i have a youtube channel called say Hoovy and night no it's called say films 99 because i rebranded it slightly but mm. i only use it for like work and i do have another channel called say ytp 99 but that's for like youtube poops and random dumb memes i make on the side which I haven't done in a while but yeah I do have those two and uh, by the way other person is called Sejon I'm his good old friend in media so yeah um, yes if I'm somewhere in Cardiff if you see someone wearing black clothing and looks a bit weird and- but with that being said thank you for watching my movie run and yeah I'll see you in the next one I guess uh, thank you goodbye goodbye <laughs> 
It's been four years since Michael Myers vanished without a trace. Hello. you moved on but you're actually just obsessed with death what are you gonna do when michael comes back for you because he is coming but this time something feels different he's more dangerous now. 